I will just go back to that, and Jim raised it, and I said it before, and I, I think it, it bears uh, repeating again today. These are the same people that just a few short years ago, at the 11th hour, came in on a $26 million budget, 25 and change, whatever it was then, without any notice, came in after a year of preparation, a whole year, and actually stepping into the operational facets of, of this fine corporation and listening to police chiefs and listening to town managers and taking the time and hearing, and I'll call it a diatribe tonight, and cut $700,000. Was it 700,000? Substantial, yeah. It was, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was over a half million dollars, uh, and it passed, that committee. And if you want to talk about a professional organization, uh, they don't operate that way. And uh, governments don't operate that way, and it's especially puzzling given the communication that came out this year that was in violation of New Hampshire law with private meetings going on online, no matter what Mrs. Woolsey says. And we've all looked at that. You don't need to be an attorney to know those were meetings. I'll just go back to that. And when we hear the same thing from the same people, uh, and we hear the accusations, and we heard from Mr. Silbert along the same thing, assassinating the schools, um, Mr. Welch's management, the board, and then he gets into the operations of the, uh, uh, the directors. It's just no good. Uh, we do no good. Our, our directors do no good. Our leadership does no good. The school's too expensive. Uh, I don't know what planet they're living on. Uh, but things are going pretty darn good. And I will surmise and I will, I will, I will end it um, by saying uh, two things. One is that um, we've invited Mr. Silberdick to come in and, and speak with uh, Mr. Welch, the finance director, and you, Mr. Bridal. Is he, is he taking you up on any of that? Not a jet, sir. That he's so quick to opine and malign and, and put that on the paper. But he, he hasn't been in touch with you? No, sir. Okay, because that, that invitation from Mr. Silberdick stands at any time. And then when, if he wants to get in, I'll, I'll go further, if he wants to get in and, and you bring in your department heads that he maligns in the paper, um, I, I'm sure the board would love for all of our department heads to sit down without the Hampton Union and without the TV on and sit down and address his concerns. Happy to do that. And finally, is uh, um, it's election season, and uh, that's really what's going on here. And. Uh, um, I've just, I've just had it with all of that. And uh, the final, final comment is uh, we hire auditors uh, to do our books. And, and the audit, if I may, Mr. Griffin, uh, the audited statements are in this book today. And uh, the people on the front were elected. Many of the people that spoke uh, tonight uh, have sat in this chair. And they weren't reelected. And they ran for reelection. And uh, the voters have spoken. But when I stopped in, as I like to do, because I like to study the balance sheet and study the income statement, and I say that to the people that spoke tonight, because they got the four minutes. And uh, um, I spoke with the head auditor. And I said, comparing this town to other towns, uh, what is our financial state, and uh, how is this town run? And uh, quote, uh, very, very well, end quote. So I would say that to the, um, the folks that came in. None of them have a financial background, as this gentleman does. Run very, very well, and that was by the lead auditor that sat in your conference room today. Thanks, Mr. Chairman.